It's 2 o'clock in Philadelphia, and time for the best show ever, ever, ever. Now, your starting lineup, lineup, lineup. bring in the heat, Ricky, Ricky, oh, Calico, Hunter, Hunter, Rogan. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Best show ever. Jay Scordo producing, as you just heard. Ricky Vitalico at NBC Sports Philadelphia Studio. Hunter Brody right to my left. And Tyrell Johnson right here sitting before you. Let's get right to our opening statements. And we start with the word of the day like usual. And that is acceptance. And it goes with two things. We have to accept certain things. Uh, one, how about that uh, Cheryl Lee Ralph acceptance speech last night on the Emmys? We'll get to that later. But acceptance. Um, during the 5 o'clock hour, for those that may or may not have, have missed it, Jeff Mosher said something interesting during the crossover segment before Inside the Birds. And he was talking about how too many people can't just accept who Jalen Hurts is as a quarterback. And I want to delve into that more because there's been two takeaways that I've been seeing on social media, listening to Anthony, listening to Kincaid, listening to Devon, listening to all the shows and and social media, um, and that's that people think that the way that Jalen Hurts played was the problem or that he still is a problem in some way, and they want him to be different than he is as a quarterback. And now, first off, just at the top, he played well. We talked about this yesterday. He played well in the game, period. And they won. And if we're going to be honest about it, last season, we know all the asterisks and other issues with it. They obviously win more than they lose with him at the quarterback position. And he did a, a number of things correct in the game, did not turn the ball over. And if you look around the entire NFL, There were quarterbacks who we think are better than Jalen Hurts that did not play nearly as well week one. Aaron Rodgers being an example. Russell Wilson being another example. Now, it's just one week, but we're reacting to just one week. And people seem to not want to have the acceptance about what Jalen Hurts is. He's always going to run the ball as a quarterback. Now, we can say we don't like that, but that's what he's always going to do. That doesn't mean, by the way, none of this means that Jalen Hurts doesn't need to continue to improve. But Jalen Hurts is never going to go to sleep and wake up Tom Brady as far as style. He's never going to go to sleep and wake up Aaron Rodgers as far as style. He's not even going to go to sleep and wake up as Mahomes as style because he doesn't throw it the way that he does, and he moves even better. At what point do we just say, okay, we want – Jalen Hurts to be the best Jalen Hurts he can be instead of saying we want Jalen Hurts to be different. And that's the part that I'm even myself I'm sometimes guilty of. I'm not saying that I'm above all of this. I'm saying I'm with everybody else. But it it was eye-opening for me. It made me think about something because at the end of the day, we'll find out if he can win in the playoffs playing the style in which he plays. But we all feel comfortable. Everyone around the whole city thinks, even the ones that are treating, and we'll get to how people are reacting to this game, even those people acknowledge that this is a playoff team. If the Eagles are indeed a playoff team with Jalen Hurts, and we all believe that, at some point, I don't want to go all the way to the Randall Cunningham, let me be me back in the day, for those that remember that. I don't want to go into all these things, but there was times where people said, oh, Uh, Donovan McNabb has to run more. Oh, Donovan McNabb has to run less. Rather than just saying, I want Donovan McNabb to be the best quarterback he can be. Why do so many people have so much trouble accepting Jalen Hurts as he is? Instead of just saying, you know what? Uh, Instead of wanting to change him all the time. How about we just ride it out and hope that Jalen Hurts continues to not turn the ball over, improve in the ways that we saw, 
and build on it week to week instead of wanting to go through a metamorphosis that I don't think is possible. Do you know where I'm coming from, Hunter? Absolutely, I do. I'm almost using today as maybe a learning experience for myself because I absolutely fall into that category that you're referencing. Now, uh, I am a Jalen Hurts fan. I am a supporter. I fall in the category of someone who is rooting for him and believe that there's something in this skill set. But I'm always trying to tweak what can change to put him in this tier of the Mahomes and the Herberts. And I wonder, is that even possible? Maybe it's not. Maybe I should find a way to maneuver through this a little bit differently where accepting Jalen Hurts' style for Jalen Hurts' style, the problem is it falls in this gray area. He's not a bum. He doesn't stink. I think he's even above average. But there is a tier that is significantly higher than him. So he's in this awkward spot. So I almost label it similar to the Sixers. I know the Sixers can win 50 plus games in the regular season. I know the Sixers can win a playoff round. I know the Sixers are going to get to the second round and it will be a battle until the very end. Do they have enough to get us to the Eastern Conference Finals? And I feel when I'm watching Jalen Hurts, I know he can beat the Lions. I know he can win regular season games. And I know he can win double-digit wins this year. Does he have enough to win a playoff game and to get this team over the hump the way that we want to be in championship weekend? We want to see an NFC championship game. Is that in him? And I don't know. I, I don't I don't. No, because it falls in that gray area. Ricky, where are you? I think you got to take it for what it's worth. I mean, did did he get a win this week? Yes, he did. I, I don't. I think everything's always big picture about him. He, it seems as though nobody will give him the opportunity to just play the game in hand, and everybody wants to see something different from him. It is what it is. The guy is going to run the ball when he sees an opening. There's no doubt about that. Did he do enough this week? As a matter of fact, I think he was the MVP of that offense this week. Early on in the ball game, he took the ball, he ran the ball when he had to, he picked up some big yards for the Eagles. As a matter of fact, without him running the ball, I think they would have punted three or four more times in this game. So I I look at Jalen Hurts and okay, I I understand you're looking at big picture. You're looking at Super Bowl or NFC championship type games. You got to get there first. You got to let the guy play these games out. I I think he did a heck of a job. I mean, could he have spread the ball around a little bit more? Maybe. But is that really necessary at at this point? He he brought home 31 31 points last week. And this is an NFL game. I mean, I think that's one thing that I think people think it's like a Nintendo game. You go in there and he could do whatever he wants. It's not always that simple. He sees more than we do. We talked about that yesterday, about him being in the pocket, him seeing where the breakdown's coming from, and then deciding to run or pass the ball. That That's just him. If he's going to run, so be it. Lamar Jackson does it down in Baltimore. Nobody says anything a- about him except for, wow, he's a great rusher, but he also could hit his receivers. Well, I think Jalen proved both in this game against Detroit. It's about acceptance today. We're going to accept the fact that Jalen Hurts is a certain style of quarterback. That doesn't mean that he can't be criticized. It's that he's he's his style. Let's see if he can continue to win with his style. He is only 24 years old after all. And we have to accept two things about this Eagles victory. One, that it was a victory. That's the most important thing. But also, if you have some concerns after the victory, you're not a bad fan either. Like, I, I, I hope that we can do balance all this and we can work to accept this that, that again, last thing. All right, let me let me talk to Mike from Del Rey. Cause, cause you are 97 fighter for that. He wants to talk about Jalen Hurts. Hello, Mike. What's up, guys? How you doing? How are you? I would be worried about that game if it was, like, week eight or nine. Mm-hmm. It was week one, so that's kind of, like, a, a big reason why I'm not concerned. Mm-hmm. I can accept Jalen Hurts. I love that guy. I, I wish nothing for the best for him. And it seems like a, a lot of people say that. So I can accept him as the player he is. I just can't accept him as being the starting quarterback for my for my team going forward for you know getting paid big bucks right. Eventually he's going to get he's going to he's going to want money and, it, and it, I just don't uh, real fast, like, Mike. It know. could be as soon as at the end of this year, right, right. Um, if he plays well enough to get him in the playoffs again, like we think, they will have a decision to possibly make at the end of this year because he was a second round pick. He would go right. into next year as a lame duck uh, right. on a contract year. With this team, I want a guy that can go win games, not just manage a game. And when you talk about acceptance, it kind of caught my ear for a minute. Like, take personalities aside, because the other guy I'm talk- about to talk about the D-bag. But, like, Ben Simmons, we weren't accepting of him. No. He was a triple-double machine. The guy played great defense, right, passing the ball. All the things you want out of a guy like that, but he refused to score. 
Like, we weren't going to accept that. We weren't going to take that. We didn't think we could win with that. And, of course, he's gone because of other reasons, but mm -hmm. he wouldn't have made it, right? We would have wanted him out of there. You're now, right. as, much, as much as I love Jalen Hurts as the guy, and, and, he, and he, didn't make, he doesn't make a lot of mistakes, if he can't get past that first read and run every time, you know, other teams are going to stop A.J. Brown. That's not going to happen every week, right? I, I just – I don't know. I don't think we can win a Super Bowl with him, and we have as much talent as we do everywhere else. I just, he's just not going to be the guy for me. Go Birds! All right, go wow. Bears there. I'm, I'm in a very similar spot. It's like I'm pouring out my emotion for this guy, wear my heart on my sleeve for Jalen Hurts. I really do root for his success, but there's just something missing. So I don't think it's impossible to have some success with Jalen Hurts, but the margin of error is that much more difficult to work around, and your roster has to be that much more perfect. Sirianni has to be that much more perfect. And scary thing to say, Jonathan Gannon at that point would have to be that much more perfect. It's a and tall what, order. What is, what is it you're you're missing that, that's the thing i want to get to that's what is it question. you're missing yeah hunter real, real, good question ricky yeah so i'm willing to have i have more of an open mind right now about the whole thing you are looking to be convinced by him by his play what do you need to see for you to then feel comfortable with him you know what i mean off the top of my head that is yeah. very difficult to answer i think it's multi-layered for sure mm -hmm. but just for a very simplistic view to keep it very broad i mean i'll kind of toss this similarly right back to you whatever it is that the top tier quarterbacks have with the mahomes and the herberts and i don't want to just say the it factor because i think that's a cop-out answer but mm -hmm. you look at these other top tier quarterbacks that we look at as the mo the josh what do what do they have that hurts doesn't so it's a lot of different skill sets that are Right. Missing in his game that they had. John <laughs> Bradford, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. First time caller. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me. Uh, I just wanted to point out that I I have been a big critic of Jalen, and I'm at the point now where we have to accept who he is. Okay. I'm a big fan of the name on the front, not the name on the back. And what he did on Sunday for the name on the front caused us to win without him doing – what he did and using his legs, the Eagles lose that game and they lose big. They got punched in the mouth and the only thing that retaliated was Jalen's legs. One thing I wish he would work on is while using his legs, still keep his eyes downfield. If he can add that aspect to his game, this offense can be unstoppable. So let me ask you this though, John, that does, your concern does speak to Hunter's stylistic issue with him though. He's saying that his running style, having 14 runs, I know the three kneel downs were taking those out of it. Instead of seven, he's, Hunter, correct me, you're yeah, saying yeah. there are seven times where he could have been looking downfield, for example, in this particular game, and instead he ran, and that could eventually, will eventually hold the Eagles back, not just Hurts back. Is that fair, Hunter? Yeah, yeah, I think that is, it's very possible. But I just want to be clear, like, I don't think that this is something that you can't win with. I'm just afraid that there's a potential cap when you see some of these coordinators, whether it's Todd Bowles or, well, now he's a head coach, but these guys that are a very strong defensive-minded yeah. teams with a lot of good talent. Steelers after the bye. They dare you to beat you with your arm. They won't allow you to run around as sporadically as it was against the Detroit Lions, and it makes it that much more difficult to, to win. Yes, if he could, if he can reduce those fourteen runs down to seven runs, and those other seven keep his eyes down the field and possibly hit somebody across the middle or deep down the sideline, I think that would change a big part of his game. Uh, I think right uh, now we have no choice but to accept. Uh, him. John, do you have a uh, Fan Fest tickets yet? No, I do not, sir. Let me put you on hold. You just got a pair. Mike from Del Rand brought up an excellent point, and that's: is it worth? the big-time money that's going to cost the Eagles to mm -hmm. keep him here. And I was joking around with Tyrone during the break, almost saying it would be nice if Jalen Hurts just stunk. Because then we knew. We knew. But he falls in the most uncomfortable category that I could remember for a quarterback, which is he does not stink. He's actually above average in this league. So the question becomes, can you win with that if Howie Roseman builds a proper roster? You can go through the history of the NFL and bring out plenty of teams, I'm sure, that didn't necessarily have the most electric quarterback. For example, 
Eli Manning, Peyton Manning, when he mm-hmm. won with the Denver Broncos, he was awful. He was a trash he was quarterback. Helium blues. He was brutal, but they won. So maybe the answer is yes, and I'm being too harsh. Maybe you can do it, and I'm being way too outrageous with my expectations of the quarterback, knowing it's very rare to find jo- Josh Allen and Pat Mahomes. Well, there you go, Ricky. Do you think that if the Eagles build up the other 52 guys to the level that they need to be, could his style of play, because we all agree, I want to make this very clear, that a young quarterback has to make a prove. Herbert, you still have to get better. You have to continue to get better in this league. Could He's his always- style hold them back, Ricky? His, I don't think so because style changes as time goes by. Okay, and as I mean, look at Lamar Jackson. He had what six? I think six runs this past weekend. Mm-hmm. I mean, He's that's way, downfield a lot. That's, yeah. yeah, that's way different than what he used to be. You learn at a certain point is in this league that running isn't everything, and getting rid of the ball sometimes is a better move. I'm not. I'm not going against that. I, I just think that. Right now, he's still in a youth movement in in, in the league. I, if if I, if I was sp- going to look at him, I would still say he's young uh, hey. as a as a NFL player, and he's only going to get better, and his decision making is only going to get better. So, I mean, yeah, it's one game. Yes, he ran the ball too many times. I think that that's that's probably fair to say. I don't, I don't think there's any doubt about that. But if he cuts down, if he cuts that down and makes a, a dump pass here and there or a screen pass here and there. Uh, you know, that that's what I think Hunter's kind of leaning towards is that read to that last guy. And if he's open, get to get the ball to him. I mean, yeah, pushing the ball downfield is great, but also 31 points to me is pretty damn good, too. Ken Howie Roseman, if you do pay Jalen Hurts, make the team strong enough with the other 52 if he's collecting that big paycheck. Well, that, well, let why. me ask you something. What is what's your next move? Let's say you don't keep him. Where, where's your next move? You going back to college? You yeah. have a lot of assets no, for no, this draft. No, you're not. You have a no, lot of assets yeah, for this no, draft, No, 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 Ricky. no, Ricky. They, they have it set up. Hunter, do you feel like if he continues to play like this, he's going to be banged up midseason? It's definitely possible. Last year we saw that with the ankle, and that limited him. I don't think we mm-hmm. got to see the crispest version of Jalen Hurts when it came down to the most important part of the season, unfortunately. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, look, guys, you can say all you want about, well, get out of bounds and slide early. Guys are out there defensively saying, I'm going to cream this quarterback. They'll take late hits. He played a preseason game where he got rocked extremely brutally when he was going out of bounds, and then the first game of the year he got popped. So it's naturally going to happen I'm more looking at the football side of things, but of course I can't pretend like that's not in the back of my head. The more times he's running around, he's he's probably going to get hit hard. Yeah, it's, it's a it, it's just this is why this conversation is we're trying to have it, a nuanced conversation about acceptance. If that if this is what he's going to be stylistically, do we keep on? Oh man, he's got to do this, or do we say let's him be the best he can be and find out? whether or not he's good enough, because everyone out there who's pretending they know, and none of you, none of us are guilty of that, are lying. Because they don't know. They don't know. And just to let you know that uh, Nick Foles won a Super Bowl. Yes, but Nick Foles won a Super Bowl not playing the whole year. I understand. If Foles plays the whole year, they don't get home field, and then they're out of there. If that Atlanta game's on the road, they lose. You had the best quarterback of the entire league running the squad until he ended Wentz up getting was, hurt. That year, Wentz was that dude. Like I don't know what the heck happened after that, but he was super great then. He got he was banged elite. up, is what happened. Well, then, then, well, well uh, there we go. Here we go. <laughs> well, no, bit. yeah, he did need a backyotomy. He did. Uh, he did after the ACL. He had to get the backyotomy. So I don't know what's going on. But that's why it's going to be fun to play it out. Tyree in the Northeast, you're on ninety-seven five to fanatic. Uh, to answer that question, he got banged up. Lynch got banged up in the pocket because in 2018, Lynch, uh, was it, uh, Lane Johnson was suspended. That was when he came back early from the ACL, but he was getting hit. He got hit 50 times by week nine. And the offensive line was being terrible at that year. But yeah. I digress. I don't and also, and that. also, that's when the left tackle started stealing that money. Now he's stealing <laughs> oh, from that. He, like, oh, he was just out there. He was just out there, JP, Tyrone, stealing that money. How do you let Vitae walk in free agency and you give Jason Peters Vitae's money? Vitae was the, the starting left tackle when we won the Super Bowl. So for the life of me, I couldn't. That's another Howie Roseman move, sentimental move, whatever the case. Anyway, mm-hmm. as far as Jalen Hurts, listen, I'm super critical of Jalen Hurts arm strength, but what I'm hearing, like, <clears throat> oh, his style of play, the, the beauty and aesthetic, I don't care how you win the game. I watch, 
I mean, we watched a quarterback last night, right, in Russell Wilson, and I always bring him up with this because I watched Russell Wilson play the ugliest three-and-a-half quarters in an NFC championship game I've ever seen a quarterback play. Yeah. He had five turnovers. But what did he do in the last five minutes of that game? He delivered. Before he delivered. I don't care what it looks like with Jalen Hurts. And I'm being honest with you. That first quarter, the first four passes, somebody called me and said, oh, he looks like trash this, that, and the third. I'm watch, I watch for leakage on the offensive line, and I'm looking at how – Detroit just came out ready to punch us in the mouth. We beat them 44 to 6. They had that sour taste in their mouth. So I'm, I'm looking at or is Jalen in a three step, five step, or a seven step drop? If I'm looking and it's supposed to be a quick slant and then he's in a three step drop and there's somebody in the backfield, I hate when people say that, oh, he's got to keep his eyes down the field. How are you supposed to keep your eyes down the field when somebody has missed a block and now this dude is running free at you? Well, so well now Ty- Tyree, I, do, I think we have to agree that both things are true. Your scenario is absolutely true. But Hunter's scenario where there's times where he goes too quick is also true. Like, both are true. Let me put you on hold for Fan Fest tickets. Both are true. We can't pretend like he doesn't ever leave early. It's also true that when it breaks down, he's the kind of athlete that can make the play right away. Both are true. Like we I, I don't we think, can't pretend I, like, like he never leaves early. No, I agree. I don't think he, they messed up, by the way, with the Vitae thing. Vitae got a pretty big, hefty payday. Yeah. And, I didn't and, want not, the and Eagles, now he's a right guard. Yeah, I don't want the Eagles to go down that path. So no, that, no, no. that's, that's that was fine just, what they uh, did. Yeah, like, no, at the time, I thought they should have looked for a, a different, younger option. He did get sentimental. Howie how has now, obviously, changed for the better when it comes to that. Bringing back Alshon on the one arm. Bringing back him over, and then he tried to move him to guard. Like, like, like he, he was getting a little sentimental with some of those guys. Once he got rid of Doug and Carson and Foles, he stopped being sentimental. Like, he, you can tell now. I bet you he doesn't even get his wife an anniversary card or nothing. Oh, like come on. Not he right. got no sentiment. Nah. He, got, he lost all his sentimentality. You think, you think his wife is, uh, what did you say yesterday? Your I wife think is, after a certain amount of time, wives really stop being Impressed. impressed with you, yes. Do you think he impresses his wife? Absolutely not. In the bedroom? Whoa, 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 hey, whoa, 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 whoa. In the bedroom? He you dug that, a little too he, deep there, he Hunter. He threw that down afterwards. You were, I'm saying, do, do I think that if you've been with somebody. <laughs> oh, man, that's great that's stuff. That's something I'm supposed to say. You're right. It's true. You're right. Well, we spent too much time together, and that's yeah, what happens. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, like after eight years, I think a lot of spouses go, I mean, seven years, seven years. I think most of them go, like, I tolerate you. Like, I love you, but, like, I tolerate you. Oh, I don't know. It just becomes comfortable. Yeah, so. like, like I'd rather be with you than without you. But, like, those jokes you think are so funny, <laughs> I mean, funny they're, they're kind of funny. <laughs> like, I tell you, the person in my life who laughs the least when I speak, her. Well, that's Elizabeth. because she's so used to it, but she knows what's coming. And internally, she can't let you know that you're hysterical. It's also to the point It's a battle. She thinks she, she's funnier than you. She also thinks that I work on material to talk to her about. Like, I, she Do thinks you? I run. No. You have a notebook of when I get home yeah, tonight. Yeah. She you thinks, did some stand up comedy. Yeah. Right. I wasn't good at that. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm sure you weren't. You were great at I was, it. I was not. The, I was okay. I, I need to hear some of this. I know. No we do. There's, there's a one clip available somewhere. Really? Can, yeah, it's not great. 